Hi, my name is Marissa Rivera, and today I'll be talking about fluoroscopy. Fluoroscopy was invented by Thomas Edison. It's a dynamic procedure, which means it has a real viewing time, and that's one of its major advantages. One disadvantage is that it gives a very high patient dose. The exposure rate for conventional fluoroscopy is 10 Rankin per minute. During cardiac catheterization, the exposure rate is 20 Rankin per minute. There are several ways of reducing the patient dose in fluoroscopy, such as pulse fluoroscopy, dead man exposure switch, decreasing the SID, and last image hold. So in normal x-ray, the bigger the SID, the less patient dose, uh, but in fluoroscopy it's a little bit different. When you decrease the SID, you actually have less patient dose. Uh, the reason behind this is because since the tube is at the bottom, the conventional fluoroscopy, the tube is at the bottom and the tower is at the top and this has the image receptor. Um, the closer the image receptor is to the patient, the quicker the x-ray photons reach the tower and it actually gets to the uh, ABC, which is the automatic brightness control, which is also kind of like an AEC chamber. And as soon as it reaches that, it shuts off the, um, the system. The image intensifier should be placed as close to the patient as safely possible. This decreases both magnification and patient dose. Employing this practice will also result in increased resolution and image quality. Fluoroscopy is used in many exams and procedures, such as a barium enema, cardiac catheterization, arthrography, lumbar puncture, and placement of IV catheters. It's also used in oral procedures, such as a hip replacement and the spinal procedures for pain management. Patient entrance skin exposure is higher when the fluoroscopic x-ray tube is too close to the tabletop. The minimum source of skin distance is 12 inches for mobile unit and 15 inches for the stationary unit. This is the image intensifier tube. In fluoroscopy, the image intensifier tube is to increase the brightness. So over here we have the x-ray tube where the photons come out, go through the patient, and towards the image intensifier. Um, over here we have the input screen, which the photons have to pass through first. In the input screen, it's one screen and three different sizes. We have the 12, the 17, and the 23. The smaller the input screen size, the more magnification there is. Uh, this increases the resolution, but it also increases the patient dose. It lowers the brightness. Uh, so the input screen, it contains a phosphor layer of CSI, which is also known as cesium iodide. Once it gets the photons, it turns it into light photons, and it goes to the photocathode. The photocathode gets the light photons and turns it into electrons. So once the electrons are inside, it goes towards electrostatic lenses, which have a negative charge. This speeds up the electron beam towards the output screen. So once the electrons start speeding over here, uh, they go through the anode. The anode has small little holes for the electrons to pass through to the output screen. The output screen contains a layer of zinc cadmium. This is where the electrons are then converted into light photons once again, and it goes into the tower, which contains automatic brightness controls. So there's also a formula to figure out the total brightness gain. This is how much the intensifying tube makes the image brighter. Um, in order to find that, you need to find the minification gain multiplied by the flux gain. So the minification gain is the input screen size squared divided by the output screen size squared. And the flux gain is the amount of light at the output screen divided by the amount of light at the input screen. So over here, I have a sample problem. The input screen is 25 centimeters, output screen is 2 centimeters. Uh, at the input screen is 2,000 light photons. When it goes to the photocathode, it turns into 1,000 electrons. Each electron, it gives off 1,000 light photons at the output screen. So in order to find the minification gain, I'm going to take the input screen size, which is 25 squared, divided by 2 squared. So this is going to give me 625 divided by 4. When I do the math, it's going to give me 156.25. So this is the minification gain. Then I'm going to go over to the flux gain. For the flux gain, I need to find out how much light is given at the output screen. In order to do that, 
I need to look at the photocathode, which gives a thousand electrons, and multiply it by a thousand because each electron gives out a thousand light photons. So when you multiply that, that's going to give you one million. And I'm going to divide that by the amount of light at the input screen, which is 2,000. When I do the math on that, it's going to give me 500. Then I'm going to multiply these two numbers to get the total brightness gain. And it's going to give me 78,125 total brightness gain. So as I was telling you before, the purpose of the image intensifier is to increase the brightness. So uh, the total brightness is increased by 50 to 70 percent. You can also figure out the magnification. The smaller the input screen you use, the more magnification there is. So there's a formula that you can use to figure exactly how much is magnified. It's uh, you take the size of the input screen, and you divide it by the field of view. The field of view is the size of the input screen that you're using. So to give you an example, um, let's say this screen has is 30, 20, and 10. So 30 is the total size of the input screen. So I would take 30 divided by, and let's say I use the field of view of 10. So I would divide that by 10, which would give me 3. So the using the 10, I would increase the size of the image three times. Now, I can also figure out the patient dose with the same number. All I need to do is square it, which would give you 9. This is an example of fluoroscopy. Uh, this one is actually a barium swallow. Uh, as you can see around the edges, um, it blurs out creating a circular view. This effect is called big netting. As you can also see in this particular one, motion doesn't affect the image quality, which is an, uh, an advantage of fluoroscopy. Well, this concludes my video on fluoroscopy. I talked about the fluoroscopy, the image intensifier, the different equations to figure out the magnification, the patient dose, the total brightness gain, and I also talked briefly about the uses of fluoroscopy and um, big netting effect on fluoroscopy. I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching.